Here we start with the Sun. One of the prominent features of the Sun are solar prominences. They are made out of hot gases that loop out of the Sun and back into it. They can last from days to months. When they break apart, huge amounts of matter are shot out into space. This is called a CME. Scientists are currently researching how and why prominences are formed. They are also massive features of the Sun. The entire planet of Jupiter can easily fit inside of one. Another feature of our image of the Sun is the Sun's corona. It is the atmosphere of the Sun. A unique and still unexplained feature of the Sun's corona is that it is millions of times hotter than the surface of the Sun. While the surface of the Sun is about 5,500 degrees Celsius, the corona can be up to 3 million degrees Celsius. Another object we have included is a picture of the SOHO satellite, one of the thousands of man-made satellites up in space now. The SOHO satellite is also the satellite that took the picture of the Sun that we are using. Here we can see the launch of the SOHO satellite Nation on December 2nd, 1995. Lift off of SOHO and the Atlas vehicle on an international mission of solar physics. Roll program is in. Vehicle responses look good at this time. Listening now to Skip Mackey instant. On our poster, the center row of images are all scaled correctly to the sun, so you can see how big the earth is as compared to the sun, for example. Above and below these images, we have larger images of all the planets and all of their major moons. The first planet we look at is Mercury. Here you can see a familiar image of Mercury. For 33 years, this was the only image of Mercury we had an image of just one side of Mercury, and even some of the image data was lost in transmission. This new picture taken in 2009 was the first time humans got to see the other side of Mercury. Getting an image of the entire surface of Mercury will not be finished until sometime in 2013. Now we have Venus. This image of Venus is not a photograph but an image made using radar. The atmosphere of Venus is too thick to see through, so the Magellan spacecraft used radar to map its surface. Venus has many more times the number of volcanoes than Earth. Some 167 large volcanoes are over 100 kilometers across. The lighter, smooth features you see here are lava flows, Earth, our home planet. This picture of Earth that we use is a composite image created by NASA in 1997. Four different satellites were used to create this image. One satellite took a photo of the land features, while another took an image of the vegetation. Next, one satellite took an image of the ocean. Another took an image of the cloud cover. This is one of the most complete images of Earth that we have to date. Here is the image of Mars we use. Mars is one of the best documented planets other than Earth in our solar system. In this image of Mars, you can see Valles Marineris. It is the largest canyon system in our solar system, with a length of 4,000 kilometers and a depth of up to 7 kilometers. As well in this image, you can see the three Tharsis volcanoes. They are the largest volcanoes in the solar system. Olympus Mons, the volcano on the bottom left, is about 600 kilometers wide and nearly 22 kilometers high. Next up is Jupiter. The photo of Jupiter is real, but the rings are computer-generated by us here at ScienceStory.com. 
The rings were first discovered and photographed by Voyager 1. Voyager was able to capture just a few good images of the rings. It wasn't until the Cassnia spacecraft passed Jupiter that the most detailed measurements of the ring system were made. It was this data that we used to create our image of the rings of Jupiter. Like the aurora borealis here on Earth, Jupiter also has aurora. In this image that we use, the aurora at the southern and northern poles can be seen. Here is the photo of Saturn with its beautiful rings that we use. This image was taken in 1999 by the Hubble Space Telescope. This is the image of Uranus that we use with its rings. Again, here at Science Story, we use the most up-to-date information to create our image of the rings. The rings were discovered on March 10, 1997, but were not imaged until Voyager 2 reached them in 1986. As well, between 2003 and 2005, the Hubble Space Telescope discovered two more rings that Voyager was not able to image. Again, this image of Neptune is real. It was taken by Voyager 2 in 1989. But the rings are computer generated by us here at sciencestory.com. The rings were predicted to exist, but were not confirmed until Voyager was able to image them in 1989. It was using this information that we created our image of the rings. One feature of the images that Voyager took was a giant dark spot. The Hubble Space Telescope was later unable to find this feature. It has since been discovered that this spot comes and goes every few years. In between Mars and Jupiter, there is the asteroid belt. Bits of material that were unable to form even a small planet because of the gravity of Jupiter affecting their movement. The asteroid belt is made out of millions of asteroids. There are maybe a bit more than 1.7 million asteroids that are a kilometer wide. There are more than 200 asteroids that are larger than 100 kilometers wide but only four that are more than 500 kilometers wide. But even if you took all the matter that makes up the asteroid belt now, it would only have 4% of the mass that the Moon has. On our poster, we chose two well-photographed asteroids to show. One is called 433 Eros, the other is called 243 Ida. By far, the largest object in the asteroid belt is Cirrus. Cirrus is now called a dwarf planet. At 950 kilometers wide, it contains one third of all the material in the asteroid belt. In 2006, a new kind of planet was officially accepted, the dwarf planet. In 2005, an object larger than Pluto was discovered, Eris. It was because of this discovery that a new definition of planet was needed. We now have five accepted dwarf planets, Cirrus, Pluto, Huamea, Maki Maki, and Eris. The definition of a dwarf planet is an object that is basically roundish and has cleared its orbit of other material. A question I get a lot from students is why then is Huamea a dwarf planet? Because it isn't round. 
it's because it is rotating so fast that it stretches itself out. If it wasn't spinning so fast, gravity would pull it back into a ball shape. The image of Pluto and Ceres are real images taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. The other three dwarf planets are just artist drawings based on the best information we have on them. Halley's Comet is what is called a short period comet. Short period comets are comets that orbit the Sun in less than 200 years. Short period comets are believed to originate from what is called the Kuiper Belt. The Kuiper Belt is a region of the solar system beyond the planets extending from the orbit of Neptune at 30 AU to approximately 50 AU from the Sun. It is similar to the asteroid belt, although it is far larger, 20 times as wide and 20 to 200 times as massive. Like the asteroid belt, it consists mainly of small bodies. But while the asteroid belt is composed primarily of rock and metal, Kuiper Belt objects are composed largely of frozen material like methane, ammonia, and water. The Kuiper Belt is home to at least three dwarf planets, Pluto, Haumea, and Makemake. The Kuiper Belt was discovered in 1992. Comet Hale-Bopp came through our solar system in 1997. It was visible to the naked eye for about 18 months. Comet Hale-Bopp is a long-period comet. Long-period comets orbit the Sun in periods from every 200 years to thousands of years to even millions of years. Comet Hale-Bopp is believed to originate from the scattered disk. The material making up scattered disk objects is believed to be similar to Kuiper Belt objects. The biggest difference is that scattered disk objects are not believed to have stable orbits and their orbits can be disturbed by Neptune's gravity. Scattered disk objects can also orbit much further out, to more than 100 AU. The scattered disk is home to just one dwarf planet, Eris.